the job market was much stronger than expected in September. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Schwab. Schwab offers investors choices like full-service wealth management, self-directed investing options, and trading on think or swim. More at schwab.com. And by C3 Generative AI. Verified, traceable answers. Secure, hallucination-free, LLM agnostic, IP liability-free, C3.AI. This is Enterprise AI. I'm David Brancaccio. There's news this morning that hiring surged in September with more than a quarter of a million more names on payrolls compared to August. And the government's tally from a month earlier was revised upward. The unemployment rate also unexpectedly moved down to 4.1 percent. People say they're worried about the economy, but in the aggregate, a lot more people are finding work. Economist Julia Coronado at Macro Policy Perspectives has just read through the reports. Julia, it really depends on the industry, but overall, all pretty fine and dandy there. Yeah, no, we've got several strong engines of job growth in healthcare and state and local governments, leisure and hospitality. There are a few weak spots, but generally speaking, this is a very healthy report. I mean, manufacturing looked a little weak. I don't know about those tech people. Tech, manufacturing, temporary health. These are all industries that really aren't adding jobs or are actually shedding some workers. Um, but again, we've got um, a lot of strength elsewhere. Construction is strong, uh, government, uh, finance, just lots of sectors still adding jobs at different rates, but lots of contributions. And just this week, Amazon said it's looking to hire 250,000 seasonal workers for the holidays, target 100,000 to come. I mean, we've got a bit of a boom here. Yeah, we've got we've got still strong underpinnings for this labor market. And now you take out the dock strike and it looks like the economy is going to be humming along. Yeah, we're also about the hurricane, though, uh, that takes people off payrolls when buildings in, say, North Carolina get swept away. Yes, and that will sideline a number of people. It's going to take time for the businesses and people to recover in those hard hit areas. That's going to be something we will see in next month's report for sure. And for those whose life revolves around lower interest rates, will this change the Fed's thinking? Yeah, if you need a gray lining to this silver cloud, it's probably that we won't get another <laughs> 50 basis point rate cut. We still are likely to get rate cuts. The Fed needs to recalibrate towards a lower rate, but they're probably going to do so more gradually. All right. Some more gradually, not as big. Julie Coronado, also a professor at the University of Texas, Austin. Thank you. My pleasure. S&P futures are now up six tenths of a percent. NASDAQ futures are higher, plus nine tenths percent now. Crude oil is up four percent from yesterday morning after President Biden flagged that Israel was considering a strike on Iran's oil facility. Still at $74 a barrel. Crude oil isn't that high, down 14 percent from its peak earlier this year. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, aiming to help save time by offering smart business buying solutions so there's more time to focus on growing the business and less time doing the admin. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by Clear Channel Outdoor, offering a nationwide network of billboards and data solutions that help businesses build brand awareness and influence consumer behavior. BillboardsForBusiness.com. And by How We Survive, a podcast from Marketplace. Kai Rizdahl explores the fight against climate change. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now to our series about political polarization in America, in particular how companies intensify or ease political divides by taking sides, taking stands, and or bringing us together. Today, the almost archaeological, painstaking process of teasing out which corporate money goes to Democrats and which to Republicans. Sarah Breiner is Director of Research and Strategy at the Campaign Finance Tracking Organization, Open Secrets. Sarah, hi. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Who's giving the most to one side or the other? Do you have any companies that you've identified? Typically, we actually see the biggest donors being individual billionaires. And top of the list this year so far is Timothy Mellon, who's basically an heir, who has given tremendously to the Republican side of things this cycle. And most of the top givers this cycle are Republicans. But Michael Bloomberg, <laughs> former aspirational presidential candidate, is a top Democratic donor this cycle. You know, these are people who aren't necessarily household names to normal folks, and they tend to be the top 
funnelers of money to both parties. So they do it as individuals, but some companies you've identified are giving. It's a bag of companies that, again, aren't necessarily the ones you'd think of. So Uline Incorporated is near the top of the pack. Uline is a packaging company, and they do give, but really it's hedge funds, venture capital, some unions, not necessarily, again, retail corporations that we know. Remind us again, as a person who's done many stories about dark money, why is it so opaque? Dark money is what we call donations to super PACs. So a super PAC is a political committee that exists to support or oppose a specific candidate or group of candidates. And dark money these days typically takes the form of donations to those super PACs. The super PAC has to disclose the donors, but if the donor has a name like 1234 LLC, we don't know who that is. So given the fact that dark money is legal in America, we really can't know fully who is behind the money that is flowing into politics in many situations. It is legal in so far as a certain degree of non-disclosure is allowable. It is becoming illegal in certain jurisdictions. Arizona passed a ballot initiative very recently saying that any donors to any group spending on advertisements in their state need to trace the money all the way down. And Arizona is one of you know the first states to take this kind of action. They're still implementing it, but nationally we might have a long way to go, but there is progress and is movement at the state level. Sarah Briner is Director of Research and Strategy at the campaign finance watchdog Open Secrets. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Open Secrets. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. She mentioned that cardboard box empire Uline. The Ulines are noted for their large donations to conservative candidates and causes. In the coming weeks, our office politics project will have how companies can keep their workforces from being jerks to each other at a time of heated political rhetoric. All of our coverage is accumulating for your streaming convenience at marketplace.org. I'm David Brancaccio with our morning report from APM, American Public Media.